are you sick of not chipping it close enough? Hitting shots exactly like that, catching it heavy and not getting to your distance. Well guys, that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today on Get Good At Golf. Hi guys, I am Chris and let's talk short game. So short game is something that a lot of people put a lot of pressure on because how many times you miss the greens? Quite a lot in a round. And then from there, what do we do? How do we pick a shot? What are we trying to play? And a lot of people hit shots like that, again, especially now in winter when it is very wet underfoot. So the first thing we've got to do is talk about tour averages. What should we expect from here? I've got around about 30 yards to this flag and the tour average from here would be around about 11 and a half to 12 feet. So yes, you're probably thinking, well, from here, I want it inside that dustbin lid, that elusive dustbin lid that gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger but tour average is 12 feet. The best on tour, on average over a season, is hitting it to nine feet. So we've got to start thinking about what is your handicap and what am I trying to do? And then from there, we've got to think, right, what is the easiest shot for me to hit from here? And how am I going to hit it close? Maybe it is not the 60 degree. It's always a 60 degree. It is always a 60 degree for James. So here we've got a big ridge in the middle of the green. So you've got to think here straight away. Am I trying to land it on the top bit? Am I trying to carry it over the ridge and not mess around with how that is going to affect it? So we've got two different ways you can play it. You can either lob it up there or you can play that bump and run. So first of all, we've got to think, if I'm carrying it over there, what have I got to do? I've probably got to go my 60 and I've got to make a bigger swing. If I make a bigger swing for the majority of golfers, what does that bring in? The potential for more error. The longer I go with my swing, if I'm going all the way here to hit it 30 yards, there's a lot of things that can go wrong and it's very much a case of getting that timing perfect, landing it on that one blade of grass that's going to make it just roll out a little bit to get it nice and close. So we're going to have to start to see that you're going to make a bigger swing, which is okay. You'll see there, landed on that slope, taking it down. I would say that's tour average, but can I stand there and repeat that time and time again? I'm not going to do that because I don't want to take any more divots out of We will John's. replace that. We will replace that. John's perfectly mown grass at this time of the year. So what is your other option? Obviously, we're going to go bump and run. And this is where a lot of people think, right, I'm going to go into my golf bag. I'm playing a bump and run. And they're going to probably pull out this club right here their eight iron. So they're going to pull out their eight iron and what we start to see from there is that they're maybe knocking a little bit too far. So I'm not going to go eight iron, I'm going to actually go with the pitching wedge. So we can play a bump and run with that pitching wedge. And what I'm going to try and do here is now think about where I would land it. For me, the easiest place to land the ball is on your first flat spot. So for me on the green here, the first flat spot it's not too far in front, maybe five yards. I'm going to be able to control landing it five yards. I've just then got to think about how it's going to break off this slope. So I'm going to come down here and have a quick look. And yes, I'm waiting for the comment below that's going to say, well, that's taking up a lot of time. I've got to walk down here. Yes, that might take a little bit more time than what you normally do. But if you're doing that whilst your playing partners are playing, it's not going to hold the group up. It's going to help you chip it closer. And after all, that's going to help you get good at golf. Picking the right time. club and save time. Because if we're having less shots after all, that's going to save you time. So back to the ball now. And I've got to change a few things at setup. So I'm not playing that high shot. So I'm not going to go as wide with my stance. I'm going to narrow that stance up. There we go. Look at this for top quality work. I thought you might have got it in your way past, but... Thank you very much. <laughs> so I'm going to narrow my stance up now, and you can see I've got much more of a compact motion. I don't need to make a bigger swing, and for the everyday golfer, we know that's going to obviously bring in less potential for error. So nice and close together with the feet. Make sure we turn this left foot out if you are a right-handed golfer. That just allows us to turn through much easier and get the club coming through. I'm trying to land it on the top here. And can we get it inside the 60 degree? Landed on the top, running down there, just past the fly, but I would say that's between five to six feet, which is well inside tour average. A lot easier for me to play that shot. That can be played now in the winter and in the summer, but start to think, don't beat yourself up. Tour average from 30 yards here, 12 feet. Let's just start picking the correct shot. It's gonna help you save time because you're having less shots, lower your scores, and get good at goal. 